the Permian Basin is located between El Paso, Texas and Carlsbad, New Mexico. One of the most widely studied features of the Permian Basin is the El Capitan Reef Complex, an exposed Permian era reef uplifted by tectonic activity during the late Cretaceous period. Today, El Capitan is widely recognized as one of the most well-preserved fossil reefs in the world. Formed as a result of the Marathon Wachita Orogeny during the Middle Pennsylvanian to Late Permian approximately 200 to 300 million years ago, as volcanic island arcs were being accreted along the western margin of Laurentia. The Permian Basin is a classic study of how tectonic compression and uplift causes downdropping of accumulated sediments, resulting in the development of foreland basin complexes, reefs, and shelf deposits. Uplift of the central platform was caused in part by an extensional fault that formed long after the evaporation of the Permian Sea, raising the reef platform approximately 2,000 feet above its original position. This tectonic uplift is accentuated by over 1,300 feet of organic reef buildup atop the base of the early carbonate platform. Paleomagnetic data shows that the earliest siliciclastic and carboniferous sediments within the Permian Basin were deposited approximately 8 to 10 degrees south of the equator. These sediments were the building blocks of the basin platforms, where reef growth would eventually extend for hundreds of miles along the rim of the basin. Stromatolites, algae, and sea sponges were primary foundational reef builders along the rim of the basin. These foundations were built upon and expanded by accretion of rigid, organic skeletal materials of other reef organisms, including brachiopods, bivalves, and bryozoans. Permian reef fossils have been preserved in situ, still in growth position, with original textures on display. Within the Permian Basin, most of the original calcium carbonate fossils have been replaced with silica dissolved from great quantities of sea sponge spicules. Sea sponges were a primary reef building species within the basin. This is due to a process called diagenesis which prefers to changes that occur during the physical or chemical conversion of sediments to rock. When these sponge spicules decompose, surrounding waters are saturated with free silica that eventually comes to replace fossiferous calcium carbonates as silicified spar or micrite. Silicified reef structures are much stronger than the original calcium carbonate fossil material, a characteristic which has helped preserve this ancient reef. Extending below the fossil reef are great quantities of bioclastic talus, containing broken fragments of brachiopods, bryozoans, fuselins, gastropods, and other reef fossils swept basinward by turbidity currents. Moving deeper into the basin, photosynthetic pisolite and algal growth became more prolific, signifying a more restricted shelf environment with little wave activity. These algal shelf environments prograde into deeper waters characterized by microcrystalline dolomitic limestones, mature quartz sandstone turbidites, and finally the fine-grained black siltstone deposits rich in organic material 
bound within the deepest waters of the Permian Basin. This close association of reefs and deep water deposits suggests an upwelling of deep, stagnant waters that provided a particularly rich source of nutrients for the reef-building organisms. The majority of organisms that inhabited the Permian Basin were adapted to life in warm, nutrient-rich, high-energy tidal environments. The following marine species have been identified within the basin, offering evidence for this tropical Permian paleoclimate. These include red algae, bivalves, foraminifera, echinoderms, pelicopod gastropods, bryozoans, brachiopods, ammonoids, sponges, and chitons. Over 750 species of chitons are still alive today. They belong to a distinct group of problematica known as polyplacrophora. This name refers to the mollusk species having eight articulating shell plates. Global distri distribution of the chiton are commonly found living in rocky tidal zones. Chiton mollusks synthesize their teeth from magnetite, a mineral that often requires extremely high pressure and temperature and strongly acidic or basic conditions to form. This magnetite is the hardest mineral known to be made by an organism. By the end of the Permian era, the continents had come together to form the enormous landmass of Pangaea, completely cutting off the basin and reef from the open ocean. The inland sea had become an unfavorable, stagnant environment and capable of providing the wave energy and nutrients needed to support such a diverse range of marine organisms. Corals, sponges, algaes, and other reef-building organisms died off quickly as a result of these hypersaline conditions. Thick layers of evaporates such as gypsum and anhydrite cover older sediments along the shelf of the basin, evidence of the rapid transition from a wet and tropical to a dry and arid environment. The Permian Reef was eventually buried by 200 million years of eroded sediments and dune deposits undergoing diagenetic physical and chemical changes before being exposed by tensional fault displacement during the Cenozoic Miocene. The formation of Pangaea affected much more than the marine organisms within the Permian Reef. The dry, arid temperatures of the supercontinent combined with increased toxic gases produced by volcanic activity caused global mass extinctions. Low oxygen conditions may have been the cause of extinction for most of the planet's marine and terrestrial life. Fuselins, rugose, and tabulate coral are only a few of the species that have become completely extinct by the end of the Permian era.